Good evening, good evening. It is, uh, it's me. Yeah, it's Tuesday. It's Marco Van B, Mark Green, on Vapor Scene on VaporTrails.tv. It is, in fact, Tuesday the 4th of February. It's going so quick, isn't it? January's just gone, pew, which is good, really, because it was a long time between paydays, wasn't it? Uh, it was a long time, five weeks. I hope you are all well uh, and uh, having a great day out there. Um, it's very, very dark, isn't it? And next week, the clocks change, don't they? So that should be uh, something to look forward to. We've got a lot coming up. Um, we're going to be looking at the uh, aero tank that I've been messing around with for a couple of days, um, which is uh, rather nice. We've got the second and final part of Davy Malik's Juicy Juicy, <laughs> which I'm looking forward to. Uh, and uh, yes, all that, all that, my friends, after the titles. Vapor Scene is proudly sponsored by Health e Vape, UK purveyor of e cigarettes and e liquid. Yes, it's me. It's Tuesday night, the 4th of February, and welcome to VaporTrails.tv and to Vapor Scene. Um, as I said there, pre-titles, we're going to be looking very shortly at the Kanga Aero Tank, which I've been uh, vaping on for a couple of days. Uh, I've got a bit of VT on that coming up. Um, I want to start this week, though, and I want to pay tribute to um, Philip Seymour Hoffman, who died on Sunday. Um, he was... He was 10 months younger than me. <laughs> he was 47 years old. Uh, and it's such a sad, sad thing that somebody so talented has been taken from us um, by the scourge that is that nasty drug that we don't like to talk about. Um, very, very sad indeed. I could list all the films that I've enjoyed watching him in, um, but I won't. Um, but I must say I was very sad when I heard of his passing and very sad of what happened to him, um, as I'm sure a lot of people are. Uh, and it'll be such a shame that we won't see him in any future films, um, just the ones that he's done in the past. Um, so uh, RIP to old Philip Seymour Hoffman. Um, very sad indeed. Um, moving on to something in the news this week, uh, and this was uh, on our Skype chat this morning uh, on the BBC webpage, uh, and it's uh, to do with batteries and not e-cig batteries on this occasion, um, on, uh, on planes, batteries on planes that are in devices such as cameras and the like. Uh, if I go to my next little slide there, um, a recent estimate said that an average small plane carrying 100 passengers could have 500 lithium batteries on board. When you tot up all the watches, laptops, cameras, e-readers, tablet computers and such like, uh, and uh, that's not even including the batteries that are on the planes themselves, um, because the Dreamliner has similar technology, uh, which has caused some fires in the past. Um, so if you add on to that e-cig batteries, and it's very fortuitous, I guess, because on Dave's show last night, he was talking about batteries uh, and uh, what can happen to those. Uh, and um, on the uh, web page there, it gives you some information there about how to avoid a blow-up. Carrying your batteries where you can get to them, i.e. in your hand luggage. Maybe putting a piece of tape over the metal terminal uh, of any spares. Or, as Dave suggested last night, put them in a little plastic box that a lot of retailers do sell them in. Keep them away from metallic objects. Uh, and uh, be careful where you buy them. Because uh, cheap is not always good. I had a cheap battery for my video camera light um, which decided to fail when I was charging it and it knocked out the entire uh, house. Uh, luckily I've got a, a new house so I've got a RCD enabled um, fuse box so it was just a case of resetting it but if I'd been out and there'd been a fire who knows uh, and uh, 
I'd just like to reiterate what Dave said last night. He said this. I would never buy an unbranded battery where I don't know what the source is. And if that means I'm going to pay three or four quid more than I would have to for an unbranded one, that's fine. Because I want to know that what I'm getting is right. And Chris, you and I both know we've had batteries that have come from God knows where, made by God knows who, with God knows what inside it, that have been utter, complete pants. And I can only concur with what Dave and Kat and Keith were saying last night. I mean, Keith was mentioning about a lighter he had in his pocket, which uh, decided to expel its gas. Um, and when I was at Vape Fest last year, I was in the pub uh, and I was talking to a fellow vapor and he had a battery in his pocket uh, along with some keys which decided to make contact with his battery uh, and very near set fire to his trousers. Um, he was a little bit <laughs> worse for wear, I have to say, um, but we got it out of his pocket and got it somewhere safe. Um, so if you do get one that does that, just get it somewhere safe. Put it in your pint, do anything with it, just uh, don't leave it where it is uh, and just be careful. Uh, and it's not just batteries, it's charges too, as Dave was mentioning last night. So quite fortuitous that that kind of happened all at the same time then. Anyway, enough about batteries. Uh, let's go on to the uh, aero tank. Uh, and I have it, have not, haven't got uh, close Epicam plugged in today, unfortunately. I did have it in when I was filming, but uh, I had to move it because I was moving some things around. I do have it on the SID, uh, and I've actually had it on the VTR as well until very... Uh, very recently, uh, a couple of hours ago, but I put it on the SID. Um, I've done a bit of VT, so um, have a little look. Today I have for you the Aero Tank, um, which comes from Kangatech. Uh, this came from my sponsor, Callum, at Healthy Vape, uh, and Callum is selling these on his site at $15.99. Um, it is a Pyrex and stainless steel atomizer, clear atomizer. Uh, it comes with two dual coil atomizers uh, and I'm sure these are going to be very very easy to re-wick. So um, let's have a look at what's in the box. Out of the outer box you get a little instruction card. Not really much it can tell you really. It tells you how to change the head how to fill the tank and how to change the airflow. And there's also a little product authenticity card here um, because on the box itself there is a little code and you can scratch, scratch away the coating um, and that gives you a code. You can go to Kanga and check that you've got the, uh, the right thing and it's not come from somewhere else. Um, we'll move that to one side, a little plastic top to this case. Let's get rid of that. Helps you if you've got some nails. There we go. Uh, and there we have our tank. And you can see there it comes with two atomizer heads, one of which we will be installing into the tank itself. Also comes with a little beautification ring and a couple of extra O-rings should you need to replace any. So um, let's take it apart and I'll show you the component parts. And as you can see, I have taken the entire product to pieces. Um, this is the little beautification ring that you get, uh, which you can put in an Ego battery, a little plint. Uh, we don't need that right now, so we'll put that back in the box. Uh, and then this is the unit itself and comes with a 510 connection drip tip, which fits in the top. Other ones will fit. Um, for instance, I've got a Gary Dibley one here that fits quite nicely. So other 510 drip tips will fit. You don't need to have the one that comes with it. Um, but we'll put it in there for now. And you can see there that it is screw fitted. Uh, and that's because this is going to fit into this section, the bottom section, um, once we put our tank in. And you can see there the tank, it is Pyrex. Uh, and uh, there isn't any thread on the tank it's secured in with pressure from the top and the bottom and the O-rings. Um, but it does mean, of course, that it is replaceable should you drop your unit 
uh, and break it. And it's reasonably thick, the Pyrex, I have to say. So, as you can see, there is a silicon o-ring in the bottom there. Uh, and that just pushes against the top or the bottom, which way, whichever way you've got the tank. Uh, and you can also see there's one there on the top section. And it's simply a case of fitting the top to the bottom and screwing them tightly together. And I would say just until it's finger tight, because any, any harder, uh, and you could well put too much pressure on the O-rings, which could uh, eventually damage them in time, but also make it difficult to take apart again um, for cleaning and such like. And we're going to leave the bottom section off for the moment because we're going to need to fill in a second uh, and we're also going to put one of the head units in. Uh, and you can see the head unit, it's exactly the same um, with the exception of the length of tube as, say, an EVOD um, or a ProTank 2 head. So the EVOD heads will fit, but the tubes are slightly short, so they will cause some issues. Um, but knowing how easy these are to actually rebuild, um, <laughs> it's not really a problem. Um, this is a dual coil. We could do another dual coil, um, or we could do a single coil recoil on it um, when it eventually goes. Um, but for the moment, we're going to keep it as it is, um, as it was intended to be used. Uh, and this is a two ohm resistance atomizer head. You do get two in the box and they are both two ohm resistance. And you can see there that there are the two wicks and they are on top of each other. Um, so the, the two coils are on top of each other there. Simply screws into the base unit as with the other devices in the Pro Tank range. Um, and you'll see the bottom, if I just zoom in on there, there is no hole. There is no airflow hole. It's a complete solid connection. And that's because the airflow comes from three small holes around the outside of the bottom. Uh, and then you can change the airflow by moving the ring up or down, depending if you want more air or less. So this is basically like a ProTank 3, but with airflow control. Uh, and not dissimilar to the Magoo, or the Ithaca, which has the airflow control. Um, the difference, of course, is that these use disposable, if you like, atomizer heads, um, whereas the Magoo is designed to be re-wickable. Um, but as we know, we can very easily re-wick these heads. So let's, um, let's put some juice in here. Callum sent me a few juices to try as well. And this one, it's a Healthy Vape Perfection, Pure Perfection, 18 milligram. And this is Bounty Flavor and it smells really nice. So I'm looking forward to seeing exactly how this tastes. Um, so as with any bottom coil device, fill from the bottom, put in your liquid in at an angle, squeezy, squeezy. Uh, and it doesn't really matter what you put in this because it's a Pyrex tank. So you can put whatever you like. If you want to put something that is heavy on the citric um, acid, or if you want to put something that is heavy on cinnamon, like fire and ice, fill your boots because you're not going to damage this with the juice. Um, so fill to the, just underneath the level there, and then screw in your atomizer head bottom section, which is easier said than done. There we go. That is now in place. So it's just a case of uh, leaving this just to soak in for a while. And then we'll come back and I'll have a little vape on it and I shall let you know back in the studio what I think. See you in a minute. And it is indeed back to me in the studio. Hello. Um, yes. Looking at chat there. Um, Dave Dawn has had the gauntlet thrown down uh, to do a dual coil live. Uh, and um, I think I'll let him do that 
rather than me. Because <laughs> uh, uh, he's used to doing that kind of thing live. I could do a single one, but uh, maybe not the dual one. Um, so there you go. The juice, I'm, I'm really liking this juice. I really am. But I'll talk to you about that when we come back uh, after the break because uh, I've got a bit of a tickly throat. So rather than cough my way through it, I will uh, have a drink and uh, we'll come back after the ads. See you in two. Vapocene is proudly sponsored by Health Evape, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e-liquid. Now it's back to Vaporseam on Vaportrails TV. Vaporseam is proudly sponsored by Health eVape, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e-liquid. And welcome back to the room. I've had a little drink. <laughs> uh, and uh, I'm not so croaky now. Uh, yeah, the uh, the dreaded lurgy seems to be going through the uh, Rob Charles TV team, uh, even though we're nowhere near each other. Um, but there you go. Uh, yes, I'm actually rather impressed with this. Um, the kind of late in the pro tank range, if you like. Um, it's not quite a pro tank, but it is at the same time. Uh, the pro tank two did gurgle for me, um, even after I re it. Um, it, it did gurgle and it still does gurgle from time to time um, depending on what I put into it. Um, I've had no issues at all with this and obviously not having the air hole at the bottom um, there's, there's no way for it to go so, so it doesn't go down the bottom and you're not then sucking it up. Um, and the juice, uh, I love this juice. Uh, I've, I've dabbled in making my own coconut flavoured juice um, and they all turn out soapy. It all turns so uh, taste soapy for some strange reason. So I'm always a bit hesitant about juices with coconut in, um, but this is very nice indeed, very nice. Uh, and I should be buying some from Callum, methinks, in a larger bottle because I haven't got much of the uh, the 12 mils left that uh, that he sent me. Um, so I should be having a go at that, and maybe at a higher strength because it's only 18, and I do prefer 24. Having said that. It's very nice, it's given me lots of nice flavour um, and I've also had my long drip tip on um, but I'm, I've settled for the Gary Dibley tip uh, which I really really like. Um, so yeah I'm going to be using this this week, uh, I'm in Scotland again this week so I'll be using it on the road uh, and uh, I might just do some filming there, who knows. Anyway times are wasting, so um, I had this bit of VT from last week 
um, but I didn't have time to show you it. Uh, and it's uh, from the University of Ottawa Health or Heart Institute. Um, have a look, see what you think. This lady might need some tweets. Hmm. Hi, I'm Jennifer Reed, Associate Scientist in the Division of Prevention and Rehabilitation at the University of Ottawa Heart Institute. I'm here today to talk about electronic cigarettes, e-cigarettes. Point one, e-cigarettes are cigarette-shaped canisters used to simulate the action of regular tobacco smoking. Within these canisters, there are batteries, and these batteries are used to heat up fluid-filled cartridges that contain varying concentrations of a number of different chemicals, such as propylene glycol, water, glycerin, flavoring agents, and nicotine. The act of smoking an e-cigarette is called vaping because the user actually inhales vapor as opposed to smoke. Point number two, although these products are readily available either online or through a number of retail outlets, they are not regulated or approved for sale in Canada. This is a bit concerning because the interest in e-cigarettes is rising, although again these products are not regulated or approved for sale. Point three. Although perceived to be a safer alternative than typical tobacco smoking, electronic cigarettes, e-cigarettes, have not been fully evaluated for their safety. We need long-term research trials to truly evaluate the safety of these products. It's unknown whether the inhalation of the chemicals or products found within these devices are in fact safe. Point four, these products, e-cigarettes, have not been fully evaluated for their effectiveness. Are they effective? We don't know at this point. There has been the one recent randomized control trial which evaluated the effectiveness of cigarettes compared to nicotine patches. However, due to the low abstinence rates that were found in this trial, the results were proved to be inconclusive. We couldn't determine whether in fact these devices, e-cigarettes, were in fact superior to nicotine patches. There's also a concern with these products that they may help to maintain a dependence in current smokers or induce a dependence in those who aren't already smoking. Point five, our last point. What do we recommend for smokers who are wishing to quit? Well, there are a number of first-line, evidence-based interventions that have been proven to be successful, and those include both pharmacotherapy and behavioral options. Speak to your healthcare provider to find out more information about these specific interventions and treatments that may work best for you. Thank you. Now, I don't know about you, um, and I'm going to choose my words carefully, but that was shite. Um, in two weeks' time, I've been vaping for two years. Are e-cigarettes effective at stopping me from smoking? Yes, they goddamn well are. So, you know, we all know. Chat, we all know. Um, so, yeah, that, that lady needs some tweets, I think. I think she definitely does need some tweets. Uh, and I'm just looking at my clock there and seeing the time. Um, Yes, now let's go on to some, uh, something a little bit more light-hearted. Uh, and at the end of last week's show, it went a bit skew whiff. Um, I don't know exactly what happened, but about 30 minutes after I went off air, my internet went down completely. So you may not have seen this, um, unless you've seen it on Catch Up. But for those of you who haven't seen it on Catch Up, this is the buzzword of the week from last week. Buzzword of the week with Dave Dawn. Dave. What do you think of the Nicorette inhalators? We shite. Thanks, Dave. Buzzword of the week with Dave Dawn. Yes, and I think those sentiments um, go to the previous video. <laughs> uh, 
Anyway, let's move on. Uh, final bit I've got for you. Uh, on last week's show, um, you saw Davey uh, with his first part of Juicy Juicy. And this is a little recap of what happened at the end. Okay, that's quite spicy. Um, oh, Jesus. That's quite disgusting. Oh, right, and this is leaking now. I will be back in a sec. Right. So because of that little mishap, um, what I've actually done is I've got the KTS Plus and I've got an Igo L dripper on top, which has been freshly wicked. Um, and before anyone says anything, no, I was not going off to be sick. That genuinely was leaking everywhere. Okay, so next up is the bacon juice. I'm going to drip it directly onto the coil. I'm only putting a couple of drips in the one. I don't want too much of this. Doesn't really sound that nice. Right. Check it's burning okay. Yep. Okay, here we go. No, that's not bacon at all. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, no, um, I would not recommend that whatsoever. So I'm going to burn that off and quickly move on to the next one. Jesus. Things I do for you, I. God, it stinks. Right, I'm going to do the clove next. Oh, God. Clove juice. I suppose maybe if you mix some of these together, it might not be too bad, but. Nah. Clove. It's not a nice vape, but it's clove. There is some spice in that. Jesus Christ. Sorry to blaspheme. <coughs> right, swiftly moving on to the final one. Oh, it's not the final one because I've got the dragons to do as well. Oh god. Now this one, the ginger, it says to shake well. So I will do, I'll just burn off this clove. <coughs> oh Jesus. <laughs> okay. Right. Shaking well. Ginger. Here we go. That's actually not that bad. Definitely taste taste of ginger. It 
it actually tastes more like the um, you know the little sushi boxes you get from Sainsbury's and some of them have or other supermarkets may have them too um, and they have the little packets of um, pickled ginger in them that's more like what that tastes of and that's actually not too bad Hmm. Hmm. Pleasantly surprised with that one. Right, finally then, I've got the Dragon's Blood. I have no idea what this is. Um, it was a free gift from them. So, give it a shot. Stinks. Burn this off. Okay then, last one, Dragon's Blood. I'm guessing it's going to be kind of like a fire and ice thing. I hope it is. That's really quite nice. I might have to check out what that actually is and let you know in the description. There's definitely spice, but definitely cove is in there. I don't know whether that's because it's still on the um, on the wick, but there's some definite heat in it. Oh, right, put some more. Yeah, there's a hint of fruit. There's some definite heat in there now. Oh. oh, yeah. I'll have to find out exactly what's in it, but I've changed my mind. I'm not going to have that. Um, so to all those guys that I said I would send some of this out to, you welcome to them um, <coughs> the only one I really liked was the ginger um, as you saw all of them had good vapor production I don't know what mixed strength they were Hang on, let me just check well it's 50 50 pgbg so pretty good um, vapor for that and they yeah they're all 18 milligram nick so there you go. That's a juicy juice for you. Um, I won't be doing them again. I hope you've enjoyed watching my pain. Um, but I do these kind of things so you don't have to. Uh -huh. Thank you very much for watching. Back to Marco in the studio. See you all later. Juicy juice. Juicy juice. Juicy juice. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to thank Davey so much for doing those. Uh, they've been around for a, a few weeks and we've kind of been moving around the schedule. And I know I've gone way over this week because um, I waffle too much sometimes. Um, yes, interesting juices. Um, and if you're watching this on um, Catch Up, then you're missing a big part of the show, which is the brilliance that is the Vapor Trails TV chat room um, because <laughs> there is some strange stuff going up and down my screen uh, and was doing so during that VT. Um, so uh, thanks to chat for uh, making me chuckle while I was uh, watching that back too. Anyway, that's it for tonight. Uh, don't forget, after me there is DE Talk. 
or if you don't speak German, you can head over to RY4 Radio at 10 o'clock. Um, tomorrow night, it is Team Talk uh, with the usual crew. And then on Thursday, it's VT Talk with Dave and Sav. Following on then on Sunday with uh, Dave's Tackle Box with Dave. Hopefully he's better as well. And then, of course, back to Monday with Dave and Kat and Keith for the Haze Hour. I have been Mark Van Basten. This has been Vapor Scene. I'll see you all next week. Tati bye. is proudly sponsored by Health Evade, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e-liquid.